But what do we draw from the life of Charles de Foucault uh, if we say that he's a, an icon, a window into heaven, that he's a piece of glass, as I say? What do we draw from his life? Why is he perhaps uh, so important uh, in other countries? I think he will become more important in the United States as <clears throat> we learn more about him. Uh, but what appeals to people about him? Uh, for me, the word inclusive has become a rather sacred word. Uh, the word inclusive uh, perhaps has started religiously and uh, in the Catholic Church uh, with inclusive language. Um, we want our language to be inclusive. Uh, we want to watch uh, our grammar. Uh, who we exclude and who we include. And I think we're all sensitive to that, of course, because no one wants to be excluded. I think that uh, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, I think we see that Jesus of Nazareth does everything he can to include the excluded. And the people who decided who was excluded, strangely, uh, become the excluded. I'm sure that in a certain sense he never excluded them, but the people who were uh, critical of certain people who excluded them from the love of God, from the reign of God, from the law of God. Uh, but the word inclusive is a very good special word. For me, it's a holy word um, because God includes everything in creation. Everything is included in creation. And the story of creation, for me, is really the effort of God uh, to include every molecule, every leaf. So we see that Jesus is uh, truly the Son of the Father, uh, that Jesus includes every human heart and every human hunger. I often think of the great example of Jesus, the loaves and the fish, uh, 5,000 people, not in counting women and children, and we all know the story of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. And at the end, there's 12 baskets, and everyone, everyone is worthy of the miracle. No one is unworthy of the miracle. I sometimes think, you know, Jesus you can say to the apostles, well, you know, hear confessions and find out, you know, who's okay, and, and they get miraculous bread and fish, and but, you know, make sure that everybody's worthy, and everybody's worthy of the miracles of Jesus. Everyone. And this kind of inclusive love, Charles de Foucault was able to cut through in some way, able to look at the uh, Muslims, and, uh, and in his day, there was a great question, who was going to be saved? Um, he went to a, a world that was completely pagan, is what the word was, pagan. And uh, he was certainly, when he first went there, he he brought his Catholic mind. What you know? What what happens to these people? And many missionaries suffered, thinking, you know, they had to get these people baptized, get them to be Catholic, so they would be responsible for their salvation. Uh, I don't think Foucault ever ever really went through that. Uh, I think honestly, because of his closeness to Jesus, he. He really, I'd like to think, as Paul says, have within you the mind that was in Christ Jesus. Have within you the heart that was in Christ Jesus. And perhaps at the time of Foucault, perhaps there was, and sometimes there can be, a Catholic fundamentalism. Sometimes we look at the Gospels perhaps as, as fundamentalists and don't look at the spirit and don't look at the inclusiveness. Sometimes we, we almost read the Gospel as who's in and who's out. I came from a, a mixed marriage. My mother was a Baptist. And my good Baptist relatives were not sure that us Catholics were going to be with them. But that wasn't so bad because most of my Catholic relatives were very convinced my Protestant relatives were not going to be with us. It was a very judgmental time. Now, I don't, I don't understand completely how Charles de Foucault looked at the most amazing people and saw God in them. He went right to the heart of every human being. I believe, I really believe, that that's the gift of total union with our Lord Jesus Christ. That's union with God. Union with God, for me, is to be able to see God. 
to see God in the heart of every human being. So certainly Foucault saw Muslims in prayer. He became very much a part of the Muslim community. Um, he very much was a, a, a part of their celebrations. And Foucault and Louis Massignon, who's also being mentioned, Charles de Foucault and Louis Massignon, very unique among the Catholic Church, because Charles de Foucault is a convert to Catholicism through Islam. Louis Massignon was a convert to uh, Catholicism through Islam. This is extraordinary. And this is why today Foucault has something very important to speak to the church in terms of missiology. We don't perhaps understand a vocation of presence. Maybe it's a kind of a, uh, of a French spirituality. You know, we want to be present to one another. Uh, but there's nothing useful. What, what are we going to get out of it? What are we going to produce? This is why Foucault is, in many ways, uh, a difficult but a good example for us. He had nothing to show at the end of his life. As the name of the video is a useless life. No life is useless. We look at his life. He, he, he believed, he believed that he was a grain of wheat. He said over and over, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it's just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears fruit. I, I wish I could say that about myself, that somehow or other, my life is going to be fruitful. I don't, I don't see that. I don't have children. I don't have grandchildren. Uh, but Foucault believed that he was to be the seed. Now, the witness of the Catholic Church to Islam is a tremendous question. And we uh, certainly, according to the Holy Father, uh, we are not a proselytizing church. That upsets many people. I think that what we're all about, you know, I think what we're all about is attraction. I think that we are, uh, as Foucault said, we cry the gospel with our lives. We cry the gospel with our lives. Hopefully this is attraction. He said, I, I hope that people will say, I'm a good man. And because I'm a good man and because I love God, I'm a good man. My religion must be good. You know, my religion. And he struggled, of course, he was a representative of France. And France was a colonial power. And France had gone into... Algeria, and if you know anything at all, uh, you know, France believed they owned Algeria. There was a serious Algerian crisis when Algeria separated from France. And then, perhaps, most important when we look at the spirituality of Charles de Foucault is his message of Nazareth. Nazareth. But it's so simple, it's almost difficult to explain that you and I live in Nazareth. That our Lord Jesus Christ lived for 30 years. He was in the seminary for 30 years, a long time to be in the seminary. He had a two and a half, three year ministry, and he was 30 years. And, and he learned humility, and he learned obscurity, and he learned people. I think that's the great message of Nazareth, that Jesus learned people. It says in the Gospel of John, I think, you know, he understood people, he read people. And yet he was able to look into the heart of every human being, this beautiful Jesus of Nazareth. And this is what Nazareth is for us. That Nazareth is the place where God incarnates himself, where God enfleshes himself in our lives. Your love for your children, your love for one another. Human love is holy love. Human love is divine love. This is what Nazareth is all about. That human love is the consecrated love, that love consecrates bread and wine, and that love, human love, we consecrate one another, we change one another's lives. And so the mystery of Nazareth, I, I really encourage you and, and urge you to look at this remarkable Charles de Foucault. Uh, there isn't enough on him in English. We need to have more you know, translations, but Look at him and, and read about him. Be encouraged by him. But most of all, we need to be challenged by him. I like Charles de Foucault. After all of these years, he challenges me. There's not a day that I say, I need to love Jesus more. This Charles de Foucault is madly in love 
madly in love with Jesus. Am I there yet? I want to live like that. And this is Nazareth. Nazareth is, I get up in the morning and I brush my teeth, and this is what Jesus did. Get up in the morning, brush his teeth, went to work. Blessed Mother packed his lunch, he and Joseph, and they did this. You know, the first 50 times you change diapers, you think, wow, this is a fantastic kid. And the 500th time you change a diaper, you say, oh my God. How do we do everything with love? How do we do this is Nazareth? That we don't have to be conscious of the presence of God. It would be wonderful if we were conscious. I don't have to be conscious of the presence of God. It's wonderful if I can be conscious of the presence of God. I don't look at Foucault. He saw the presence of God where nobody saw the presence of God. And this is why the desert is so important to him. I wish I had time to, to look at how Foucault loved the desert and how important adoration of the Blessed Sacrament was to him and how he really was uh, the one who really used the word the fundamental option for the poor. Charles de Foucault, he says the fundamental option for the poor. So much there that, that we can learn from. So I pray that, that these few moments will be just enough to touch you so that this great man, he can help you to love the Lord. Yes, but we love the Lord, he said, by loving one another. You know, I, Dorothy Day said the most painful words. She said, we, we, we love God as much as the person we love least. When I get to heaven, God's going to look like the person I love least. That's tough. And so this inclusive love, I ask the Lord in all my heart to help us to look at that inclusive love. Go beyond that judgment. Say, look, I expect more from people than I expect from myself. I ask the Lord to give you a very special gift. And so I pray through the intercession of St. Charles de Foucault and also his good friend, Louis Massignon, who is also a great saint, that we can unconditionally love one another. It's the unconditional love God has created us and constantly recreates us. Amen.